أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما هي ما شاء الله شيئا إذا ولم فتبقى كثيرة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي رسول وقول العام منكم and always a reminder for myself أن عبدك العجيس الضعيف مسكين وظالم جهل and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. Alhamdulillah Allah grant us a life in which to see the 14th of Muharram and to celebrate the holy birth of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban of the Sallallahu Siru and Fardul Alam, Fardul Alam Shahi Kul and that Allah wanted to create the souls of only Allah the soul of Mawlana Shah Naqshband created, so 7,000 of Allah's years before any other creation of awliyaullah and saintly souls means has an immense ocean of reality and the blessings of the Naqshbandi Sufi way takes an immense secret from his holy heart. We pray that Allah dress us from his lights and from his love, from his ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad his ishq of Ahlul Bayt, his ishq of the holy companions and that these knowledges that dress the tariqah from his holy heart, these are from his jewels that Allah has given to his holy soul and that alhamdulillah Naqshbandiya is blessed with these realities and becomes the sustenance for the students, means the food is rich and so rich to keep the hungry fed during difficult times. That as times become more and more difficult food becomes scarce, not only the physical food of dunya but is the spiritual food that gives life to the soul, gives hope to the soul, gives clarity in our guidance, in, in our way and has an immense, immense blessings that Allah has bestowed upon Naqshbandiyatul Aliyya and that bestowed upon our souls to follow this holy way, that their sustenance so strong that with all the support of Ahl Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bait and holy companions dressing the tariqah and the way that this sustenance flowing so that the students can take from its knowledges and its realities and reach to the Holy Presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So alhamdulillah that Allah has dressed and blessed the tariqah with these blessings and that we pray that Allah expand within our hearts to receive these immense lights and that Allah put in the opening of this year in the realities of Muharram, in the realities of Hijrah put the holy birth of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban Siru at the first month, 14th day and carrying the secret of 114 surahs of Holy Qur'an that these are the inheritors of the secrets of the heart of Prophet which is the heart of Holy Qur'an which is the realities of Holy Qur'an. So alhamdulillah that Allah to dress us and bless us from these realities. We pray that Allah to give us life 
and love to see these realities and blessings to be dressed by these realities inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzata amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha. InshaAllah. What we have? Do you have any questions? <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum, Sayyidi. Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Sayyidi, we really want to do a lot since we understand faith is in action. But how do we do that when we are struggling and getting to know ourselves, struggling with ourselves? How to to do anything, I think it's all the talks that we've been giving that I think we become a generation of people looking for excuses and we come from generations of people. We just talked about the realities of Imam Hussain as salaam, immense realities for the last month or so just one from another and not too many questions on them or we're going back into to go into them and just more and more new subjects but I don't think we understood those subjects so it's always hesitant to keep putting more and more on the table when we don't finish what we have. When we came from the realities of Imam and Hussain as salaam is that to struggle whatever our fate is in life to face it, this is a great fight. The fight against the self, the bad character and the desire to do good. So the fight first is the, against the devil inside and they're releasing videos and short videos on, on that subject all the time now. So this is, this is the, the great struggle, the one who wants to fight his inner demon and to reach towards purity. The more he fights his inner demon the more ability he has to serve and want to serve. When he loses the desire to serve and the losing the wanting, it's not from their cleverness. The shaitan has taken more and more control of the servant, don't do that now, don't do this now. So either they gave up their fight or at some point shaitan has convinced them to ease on their fight. But either way it's a two-edged sword. So the ability to fight shaitan is the ability to serve, it's not, they're not separate. So imagine shaitan there, every time you put your knife into shaitan you have the ability to serve. If he puts his knife in you we have no ability to serve. We don't want to serve, we become reluctant to serve, everything becomes lethargic, slow down. It's not a coincidence, it's not cleverness, it's not, oh I became busy. Shaitan made you to be busy, not Allah because Allah doesn't care for the, the dunya, we care for the dunya. We want to do the things for dunya that are pleasing to ourselves. What Allah wants is for us to have our abode in paradise. This always has to be understood like what does the soul want? The soul wants service. The soul wants to be inflicted by difficulties because it doesn't like the body. So we'll understand Allah wants the abode of paradise and wants the soul to be purified. The body and nafs don't want that, they want pleasure and they want everything 
of ease and work and money and all the things that come with dunya. This is the struggle. So it's a matter of fighting dunya to bring out the realities and the haqqaiqs and, and the ability to serve. So every time we thrust the knife within shaitan because the fight is against shaitan. The shaitan inside and outside, the nafs, the ego. So every time we are able to fight the ego we can serve more. It's just that simple, it's not a… it's not a… like a duality, we can do both. We can serve shaitan and then we can serve Rahman. It is the fight against shaitan, that's why the knowledge of how he operates. We say, oh he's in that food, oh he's in that show, oh he's in this thought, oh he's in… in trying to disorient you. Why? So that you don't reach knighthood, right? So why? Think of why… why are they doing what they're doing? You know the shaitans are, are hermaphrodite, both male and female. So the, their gender is their agenda. That's why they're imposing that upon people so that they can take the, the barakan, the energy away from people and then those people become then servants of a much lower negative force. If we understand that agenda then we understand why it's happening, no why is that, oh look it's in every TV show, of course it's in every TV show, it's in every music, it's in everything to lower the vibration of people, to make them to be confused and not to reach towards their reality where men are men and the women are women. When they serve the way that Allah created them to serve, they reach towards their saintly reality, their illuminated realities of their soul. And this is needed in these days of difficulty. When they stop caring about their soul and they're distracted by dunya, then difficulty begins to come. So it's a matter of how much are we willing to fight against shaitan. So we do our zikr, we do our tafakkur, we do our contemplation and we give our charity. If you're going to work hard then give your charity so that that cleans you. Take your time out and do your meditation, do your zikr, all rides and time management. In your drive or in your train or in your bus you do your awrad, you do your zikrs on the way going to work, coming back from work. It's a matter of self-discipline so that they take the battle against shaitan to be serious. That's why they're teaching all of these realities and, and all of this where shaitan hiding and how he's, he's in everything so that people become educated in this process and in this battle against negativity. And the immense knowledges from the oceans and realities of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban at the Sunnah of Siru. That every, everything been taught is from his oceans. So on the night of his birth what particular thing can one person mention? There is not one particular because he's an ocean of immense realities and all that been spoken and every night and in every association is from his holy heart and from his holy oceans. Anything good and anything blessed and anything incorrect is from my own ignorance. But they… this is… every night is their birth, every night is their reality, every night is their celebration. Every time we gather under the Naqshbandi flag it's a celebration of his life and his legacy and that we keep it alive, we keep it going, we keep it flourishing then his holy nazar be upon us as his children and grandchildren to carry his way and to carry his flag and to carry what they stood for, for their immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad So when in the, in the talks of the 11 principles of Naqshbandiya and all of the different subjects that we talked about, these are the great Muhammadiyoon, their knowledges can't be unlocked until the servant loses themselves and becomes Muhammadiyoon. Without it, it seems very, very superficial. 
So when you see, oh, make the dhikr of Allah and that we described when we talked about the 11 principles of Naqshbandiya, that one of them is to make the dhikr of Allah and people say, oh, I can do that. I say, but yeah, it's, it's not at it's not that level. This is at the teaching level in which the servant is to become Muhammadiyun making the dhikr of Allah. Then it becomes the real dhikr of Allah. If you're not Muhammadiyun and we're still within our nafs, that's just an imitated dhikr and that's not what he is teaching. So it means the haqqaiqs and the immensity of these realities are just the immense oceans. And that we gather tonight for this wiladat, for this birth that He remember us, dress us and, and continue to always bless us, our families and our communities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Please forgive my ignorance, um, can you please expand on the reality of Gothar and the Zamzam on this 14th of Muharram and Sayyidina Shah Naqshaband? Yeah, Mawlana Shah Naqshaban described that on, on the 14th of Muharram, there are four times a year, one of them being on the 14th of Muharram, that a du'a is placed into the zamzam and that he makes a, a special du'a in that zamzam if you drink it by recognizing Bi haqqa ma'u Shah Naqshaban Waisya al-Bukhari. Ya Rabbi grant us from these lights, Ya Azizu Ya Razaq Bi haqqa Bahu Deen Shah Naqshban Muhammad Waisi al-Bukhari and drinking zamzam and they are the zamzam. And these are all the talks that we gave last month of Kawthari. The shaykhs represent the heart of Prophet And what was the twelfth month was the Surah Kawthar because the hijrah is to the heart of Prophet which is the oasis of all realities. So as a result these realities are the kawthar, they are the manifestation <coughs> of these immense oceans of abundance and every reality exists within that abundance and their souls they represent that. And we described before that they are the qalams of Prophet that if Sayyidina Muhammad is the qalam of Allah means that they, they are like a pen for Allah Prophet because the pen is like speech. And these awliya are like pens for Sayyidina Muhammad means the immense flow from the heart of Prophet is their reality that Allah created their soul from these oceans and realities. That's why when we love them and we come near to them and begin to celebrate their life by being Naqshbandi, by being ambassadors of love for Prophet is like being with your grandfather. His inheritance is these knowledges because there's no way for you to listen to these realities and if you were not from that reality. Because the souls they're in one ocean together from a, a reality and when they come to the dunya Allah through a magnetism brings them together. We're in that knowledge in paradises, in the presence of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban, in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad as those uloom and knowledges are being taught to our soul in their presence, then the imitated version upon this earth begins to send out these knowledges and the souls of what they call uns and familiarity, the souls that are familiar because they're taking this in Divinely Presence. And they come and say, this is very familiar when I heard this. When I hear these teachings they're very familiar, I feel, I feel like I've heard these before. Because yes, their physicality is allowing them to come towards their spirituality. And the spiritualities that are in one ocean can only meet together. The different oceans they don't come together. If their spiritualities with a different shaykh 
then they're not interested, they have no interest to it. If Even if they hear it they pass it say, I don't understand what that was all about. So it's, it has to do with an immense gift from Allah and then we're already in that ocean in their presence. And in this imitated world the form that when we hear these realities it resonates into the heart and soul of people and they come towards this Naqshbandiya way. And even in the ocean of Naqshbandiya not all of them have those levels of knowledge. So when they hear these levels of knowledge their souls are resonating from that level. So means in the, in the reality of their souls they're also in different pools of depth. The ones that are in the depth of those realities they even come and they understand within Naqshbandiya that, oh when we talk about this, this resonates with me. And they can be from Naqshbandiya but they have no resonate, they don't resonate with any of it because it's not, it's not for them that level. We said then Allah described the people of tafakkur that none know it except the people of contemplation. So it means that none will know it except and means that there are exceptional people whom Allah gave them the ability to stop and contemplate. It's not the masses, it's actually none will know it except. So in that clause that's like saying that uh, at a 100% 1% may understand realities and tafakkur and contemplation. So it's not the mass, it's the minority, it's not the majority, it's the minority. And they become like stars on a dark night, they'll take knowledges and their hearts illuminate from immense knowledge. Some just sit in, call them Nashbaniya, they go to a zikr, they don't hear any realities and they go, that's something different. But those whom resonate with very deep realities, their hearts will illuminate based on these realities because the knowledge is a power. When you're able to take a knowledge means your heart and soul will be dressed with a power. You're being fed something from paradise. If someone doesn't speak knowledges means not feeding anyone. If you don't get fed you basically starve. So even spiritual, if you're not fed spiritually what are you doing there? You only start to go sit at other people's tables. So it means that there's an immense reality in, in giving these knowledges and it's not meant for everyone because this is going to be ishraqiyoon, the one whom take it and bring it deep into their reality. Because my shaykh was the imam of Ishraqiyun, not all shaykhs. So it means those whom understood it, inherit the reality, they become Ishraqiyun, the rising sons of the West in which their heart will illuminate through immense darknesses, immense difficulties. So not just sitting in a khatim going to do that for you, you have to be fed from the realities and, and haqqaiqs of the Muhammadan key that is the key wasallam. So these are very deep, deep realities that if you feel the affinity toward it, you feel the resonance toward it then you're of those. If you don't then you go somewhere else, inshaAllah. Salatul Maqrib inshaAllah, we break for Salatul Maqrib inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzatam wa yasifoon wa salaam al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream 
every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.